All right, and I am now recording. Hi, my name is Dr. Stephen Smith, and I'm the director of the Central Virginia Governor School for Science and Technology. And I am here with Dr. Scott Douglas, who is our assistant director, and three of our current students, student ambassadors, and we're going to share information with you about the Governor School. And uh, the first thing I'd like you to do, if you could please type your full name into the chat, so we'll have a record of who was here, that would be great. Very helpful for us. And I want to be sure that um, I'm clear about how we're going to operate the session. Hopefully everybody's comfortable with the Zoom interface. But I am going to share screen and go through a PowerPoint, and then I'll be changing to show you a couple of quick videos. And in fact, I think I'll start with an overview video, just as a few people are still coming in from the waiting room. So now you should see um, the Central Virginia Governor's School entrance. That's actually the light on in my office. And oh, I need to, I need to be sure that you can hear. So if you would please give me a thumbs up if you can hear the video when it's done. At CVGS, gifted high school juniors and seniors make important connections to become tomorrow's leaders. Our dynamic half-day program provides active learning opportunities in a supportive and engaging environment. As a part of our community of learners, students work collaboratively to develop the knowledge and skills needed for success in college and beyond. Central Virginia Governor's School for Science and Technology, making connections and developing leaders since 1985. All right. So I really liked that video because it was produced by one of our students. The voiceover was another one of our students. And uh, I just thought it was very interesting that there was a student with a hammer and a watermelon. I don't know if you picked up on that. But you got to wonder what's that about. In any case, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started, and I'm going to share screen our PowerPoint, uh, which will give you an overview of what we are going to do this afternoon. And I'm going to arrange my gallery view. So our mission is to develop leaders, and specifically leaders who possess the research and technical skills, the global perspective, and the vision needed to address the challenges of a rapidly changing society. That mission was written in 1985, and it is still relevant today. And you can see our class of 2020. Um, this was taken last spring, so we couldn't get together for a class photo the way we normally would, but we felt it was appropriate to put their photos in a Zoom window because that is how we ended our year. Now, last year when um, base schools needed to discontinue on-site activities, um, we actually were ready to go to a fully online model, so we didn't miss any instruction last spring. Um, and that's because our program is so different and our access to technology is so robust. So we were able to continue on, so our students didn't miss instruction last spring. So how is this event going to work? Um, we're going to ask that you remain muted through the presentation, and we'll have question and answer time at the end. We're going to follow a general outline. I just showed you a quick overview and introduced myself, Dr. Stephen Smith, and we have Dr. Scott Douglas, our assistant director. Um, we'll have a slideshow presentation for about 25 minutes. Then we'll have a video that features staff and students from last year. That's about 10 minutes. And again, that was produced by a Gov School graduate. Then we'll have our three ambassadors introduce themselves and they'll share their statements. And then we'll have question and answer time. So that's our overview for our time together today. During the slideshow presentation, if you have a question, please jot it down so you don't forget it. And then we might answer your question during the presentation. Uh, if we don't, then you'll ask it at the end. And what you can do to ask it is type it into the chat window, right? That way our ambassadors can take a look at that and Dr. Douglas can, and we can make sure that your questions are answered. So the first thing we're going to do is a little bit interactive. We like to be interactive in our presentations. And I want to be clear about how this is going to work. So you are going to chat things. You're going to type into the chat, but you're not going to hit enter. This is key. Don't hit enter until I count, count to three. I'm going to go one, two, three. Then you're all going to hit enter at exactly the same time. Does that make sense? Thumbs up if that makes sense. Electronic or just, yep, good. I see it, Luke. Thank you. 
So we're, here are the two numbers. You're gonna enter a number, then a comma, then a space, and then another number. You're gonna enter CVGS has blank students. I don't expect you to know this exactly, but I want you to make a reasonable guess. So you're gonna enter in the number of students you think we serve, then a comma, then a space, and then the number of high schools you think we serve. Don't hit enter yet. You're putting this into the chat. You're not gonna hit enter until we count it out. Um, so Maya and Jackson, can you give me an electronic thumbs up if that makes sense? Yeah, I like it. I see it, Maya, thank you. Okay, We're gonna, I'm gonna count to three and then you are going to uh, hit enter. One, two, three. All right, Dr. Douglas, what are we seeing in the chat? Is it looking reasonable? Oh, we're seeing a variety of answers, but I'd say overall pretty reasonable. Um, we actually serve a lot more, a lot of people are going with 103. We have more students and certainly more high schools than that that we serve. Um, but I, I like the guesses. Some, we've got them ranging from about 25 students at, from three schools to 20 from 13 schools, 150 from three schools. Um, 72 from five, a variety of things. So I wonder what that answer is. Dr. Smith, can you enlighten us? I'm going to, but first I wanna say an important thing about being at the Gus School is being brave. You don't have to be correct all the time, but you must be brave. You must be willing to take a chance and share an answer. That's how you're gonna learn. So I wonder what our ambassadors put, but you can, you can track down there. No, we're not gonna put you on the spot. Here we go. 138 students, 10 different high schools, 10 different high schools. Yeah, I hope I didn't just do it. I just give away the next answer. Hopefully nobody was paying attention. All right, we'll see. Well, this one was an easier question anyway. So now we're going to try again. You're going to chat. Um, we do have students who attend for three periods in the morning. Then they go back to their base school, typically for English, for history, for foreign language, that kind of thing. Our courses are weighted for your grade point average. Now the question is, how are they weighted? So you're going to enter in a one digit number. And then I'm going to count it out, and you're going to you're going to hit enter. All right. So you're entering in chat that one digit number. How are they weighted for GPA? I know some people already saw it. I, I see Drew talking. One, two, three. Everybody should get this right. How's it look, Dr. Douglas? It looks pretty good. Lots of fives, a couple fours. Um, yeah. Uh, if you put less than that, you're not trying to anticipate what your grade's going to be. Come on, people, oh. be positive. No, no, no. <laughs> That's, you, okay. We're no, but at least they, they do realize, though, that our courses are very weighted and that it is to their advantage to come to governor school if they choose. That's exactly right. Uh, a B at governor school is a 4.0, just like an A in a typical course, but just like um, your advanced placement might be weighted 5.0, all of our courses are weighted 5.0 for GPA. We do have transportation provided. Now you need to use context clues. A blank with all software needed is provided. A blank with all software needed is provided. We want you, don't hit enter yet, but just into the chat, put what word you think is going to be revealed when I click. One, two, three. Yeah, I think people realize it's going to be a computer or a laptop. It is. I actually have an answer for a Chromebook as well. These are high tech laptops. Dr. Smith, do you want to tell us more about that prize? Yes, <laughs> I don't think we can call it a prize. Um, however, you do need it back when you graduate, um, but these are the same laptops that our staff had. So these are solid state drive, uh, HP Spectres or above. These are, these are laptops that can run the software we provide. We provide Windows, we provide Microsoft Office, we provide the full Adobe suite, for example. So um, yeah, these are, these are uh, powerful machines uh, and our students need them to do what we ask them to do. So you have access to amazing technology here at the Governor's School, unique opportunities are provided, and there is no blank for students or their families. So that's the next word, you have to fill in the blank. There is no blank for students or their families. It is not escape, for Drew was thinking escape. It's not escape, it's something more positive than that. All right, you've entered, one, two, three. Did anybody get it like spot on? Yeah, there's, I think everybody got the correct answer, whether or not the terminology is right, but a lot of people put cost, fee, things like that. Um, my answer of chance was not correct. It is, there's no cost or fee to parents or students ever to attend the governor's school. We do not, you do not get a bill from us ever. That's right. Fantastic. 
All right, so CV Jest environment. Dr. Douglas, what can you share with us? Well, I can tell you that it is certainly different. Um, and also, I, I would like to mention too that uh, as Dr. Smith mentioned, I'm Dr. Douglas. I teach all the uh, juniors physics here this year. Um, I also do a senior seminar and internships, among other things. And I'm able to talk about the environment quite a bit because I was a traditional high school teacher for 12 years. As a matter of fact, I taught at EC Glass for 12 years, starting back in the 90s up until, um, uh, well, about, oh gosh, I think I've been at the governor's school for 11 years now um, and uh, enjoying every minute of it. But I'll, I'll tell you, the environment is different. We learn a lot by doing. We have um, collaborative learning. We actually have what's called inquiry-based learning and we uh, learn together. It's not competitive, it's collective, okay? We actually talk about learning communities and helping each other out. We learn about asking good questions and using reliable sources. Knowing how to ask a good question rather than just having students answer questions on a page where it's very, you know, like a textbook would, um, our students learn how to ask those deeper and meaningful questions. They also learn effective study skills. Our students will go on to competitive colleges and universities. When they go off to these competitive colleges and universities, they need to know how to study. You might think, well, I never had to study before. I seem to be getting some pretty good grades already. Well, that's great. But when you challenge your stuff yourself, you're going to need to know um, about how to best prepare. So there are different ways about preparing for different tests. And that's one of the things that we actually do like when students study for my class in physics, that's going to be different than what you might do in math or studying for a history test. In physics here at the governor's school, uh, you, you can't, we're not encouraging you to memorize. We want to develop those critical thinking skills that will be applicable to many different areas. Uh, you also have leadership and teamwork opportunities here at the governor's school. Um, several of our students will be ambassadors, for example. Um, teamwork, a lot of our labs are teamwork based but also senior seminars. So there's lots of opportunities for our students to work in teams because when you go off to college or in, even into the workforce, rarely are you working in isolation. You will oftentimes have to work with other people and we develop those skills to help you uh, effectively work in a team. Students develop that independence in time management. Perhaps one of the most important skills that our students learn is that time management and that independence and sometimes what we call academic maturity. And what we mean by that is you'll have um, an assignment that might not be due for a week. And there's a lot of parts to it. Well, it's one of those things you can't wait till the night before to do. Um, it doesn't mean that some of you won't try, but no, we try to get you to that point where you're actually managing your time better so that you become a better, more effective learner um, to learn things independently on your own and have the academic maturity. So we give you the independence and time management. There are actual times where you're on site that you might have a three hour lab or a three hour research block of time. And you, we want to encourage you to use that time effectively, but we're not coming around and tapping you on the shoulder and saying, hey, you need to get off your phone and start doing work here. Matter of fact, you'll oftentimes see students take a break or be on their phone. We're not gonna redirect you there. We're gonna want you to make the right decision at the right time, because when you go off to college, you're not going to have someone there telling you, get off your phone, okay? So develop those skills now, it'll make that transition so much better. Okay, I think I'm ready for the next slide, Dr. Smith. <laughs> well, and, I, and I'll make two points. One, you can only play among us so many times. You really need to focus a bit more young people. And, and two, um, what he said about physics, uh, I wanna make the point that it's not only not about memorization, you can bring a study sheet in for the test, right? So those formulas, you can bring them into the test. Memorizing formulas is not what you need to be learning in physics. You can look formulas up in the real world. So why couldn't you look them up on a, an opportunity to express your understanding of the content? So there are things that um, are different about Gulf School in terms of what we expect and how we assess. Yep. Yeah, that, that, that's right. That's a, a, a very good point. Um, our students here, like they don't memorize formulas. I wanna know, can you apply those formulas to a new situation? Um, because if you go out in the real world and you're an engineer, I hope you're using a textbook and all the resources. Otherwise, I don't want to cross your bridge. I want you to use every resource available to you. And so that's what I mean. Sometimes students are like, oh, good, we don't have to memorize stuff. That's great. What's more important is can you use those critical thinking skills to apply what you know to a new problem? And so we're not about memorization. We're really about that higher order thinking um, here at the governor's school. 
But here you see a lot of uh, excellent pictures of students working together, teamwork, and that's there's a spirit day right there in the middle. Um, now this was, you know, pre-COVID time, of course. This is not, we're not just being super cavalier here, um, but this is a, a very fun environment. You can see a lot of teamwork, uh, lab-based stuff, students working on different things. We do in fact have those spirit days, as I mentioned, students working on microscopes and so on. Um, you know, but things are a little bit different for now. And so, you know, this year we've changed things up as a lot of schools have, um, but we uh, adapt very quickly. As a matter of fact, in the spring when everything got shut down, we did not miss a single day of school. We just hit the ground running as we do here at the governor's school. We're very flexible like that. And so what you see now is our students still participate in labs. We're still having labs here. Um, and you can see students doing independent research. Uh, there's a student in front of our thermo control unit, which is measures the temperature. You see people properly spaced and working independently at lab tables. In the bottom left there, um, if you look at the bottom left, you actually see we had a panel of directors of admission offices from places like Virginia Tech and University of Virginia and University of Lynchburg um, and so on. They all came together to talk to our students about how the application process for colleges and universities was going to be different this year in these challenging times. And so we're always doing what's best for our students and providing these opportunities. And in the bottom right, you can actually see something that says C CVGS Trivia Night with Harry Potter and Star Wars. That was a fun activity that uh, Dr. Smith and Mr. Steele, one of our other instructors here at the Governor's School, uh, put on that was a fantastic um, question and answer. And, and I, I'll be honest, I thought that was going to be kind of easy, like a lot of people are going to get this. I did not do well. And I've actually, you know, I, I, I love Star Wars and I've at least seen the Harry Potter movies, but um, it, it was pretty challenging. Um, but yeah, let's keep going here. Now, as Dr. Smith mentioned before, uh, we like students to be brave. It's not enough just to be a good student and be able to memorize a bunch of facts. Sometimes you have to take a chance. And so I wanna try something a little bit interactive this time. When confronting a problem, students need to remain flexible and see what others might miss. Oftentimes when you work in a group, one of the most challenging things is seeing things from somebody else's perspective. And so I wanna know what your perspective is when you are shown something and asked to respond what it is. So here's what we're gonna do. The first thing I'd like you all to do is please unmute yourself. So go ahead, you can unmute yourself. Don't say anything yet. And then Dr. Smith is going to show a word and I want you just to say the first thing that you see, okay? So if, if everyone's ready, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna count backwards from three and you're gonna say out loud, unmuted for everyone to hear because you're brave, the first thing that you see. Is everybody ready? Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. Opportunity is nowhere. Opportunity is nowhere. Okay, a few, there, there are some brave people. Some people wanted to hear what other people said. That was, that was good though. But I heard uh, a couple of different things. First of all, opportunity is nowhere. You can see that word in there, Opp opportunity is nowhere. It sounds a little dark, or you might've seen opportunity is now here. A little bit, op you know, I, I, I'm pretty sure, I, did, did you hear someone say snow? I feel like somebody said snow. I don't, opportunity, I snow here. Now, those are all different perspectives. None of them are wrong, uh, but everybody sees something a little bit different. And so I just wanted to share that real quick, just to illustrate a point. All right, thank you all so much for participating in that. Now I'd like to talk more about the junior courses, math, physics, and research. Our students, when they come to the governor's school, take math, physics, and research. And as Dr. Smith mentioned, they return back to their base schools for English history and an elective right? Mathematics, when you come here as a junior, you have options. Math, math, uh, math analysis, which is our pre-calculus class, or Calc 1. They are duly enrolled, which means they are for college credit. Um, now, a lot of our students will choose to take math analysis, even if they've had math analysis before, because it is different here at the Governor's School, um, as is calculus. We move very quickly, um, but we also, we teach it very thoroughly, but very quickly. So it's a very fast-paced math class. And next we have physics, also rigorous and very lab-based. And something you'll notice, this is um, a picture from, I think just a couple weeks ago. And you can see every table has a separate lab setup. 
Now, I didn't used to have this much lab equipment. We actually ordered a lot more supplemental equipment just to make sure all of our students could still participate in the hands-on lab opportunities. Part of the lab, the lab experience here at the Governor's School is very important um, for us. And so we wanna make sure that all students in a safe way can participate in ongoing labs. So our synchronous uh, instruction has been fantastic this year. Students actually interact, not just in the lab, but all of our classes in the hybrid model are taught synchronously. And hopefully next year we'll be all live and in person and happy again. Um, but regardless, we remain flexible and doing what's in the best interest of our students. So if I may, Dr. Douglas, I'll talk just a little bit about the research course. Now, people who know me know that I could talk about the research course for a long time. Uh, it's really unique, special, project-based, individualized. Each student um, selects a category and then a topic that will allow him or her to collect data relevant to a question that he or she writes. And we have research in all these areas. Really what I did is I challenged myself to see if I could come up with a category for each letter in the alphabet. And I just started going through and it wasn't that difficult at all to do. So we have so many different types of research that are going on. And essentially, whatever your interest, we're gonna work with you to find a research project that will address it and you want to do something in which you have an abiding interest because you will be working with that project for the entire junior year. But the strength of doing research for our students is related to understanding what they see in the media about um, research outcomes. And having gone through the process, they understand that all research needs to be taken with a grain of salt. And what that expression means is, you need to look behind the statement of the conclusion and try to see what the methodology is and how much confidence you can have in what's being stated. Research never proves anything. It just helps us understand the world a little bit better. So our students know that. And when they present their research, there are great benefits to them in terms of scholarship competitions and applications for college admissions. So during the first semester, they're gonna complete their literature review. So all research is based on prior research. We wanna read and come to understand what it is we think we know in that field in science. Then they'll design their project and collect data. They do all of that first semester. So our students, our juniors are collecting their data right now. In second semester, they write a paper and we help them write that paper throughout the entire year, but they finish it second semester. They design and print research posters. And these are posters at the quality of college science posters, and then they prepare for presentations. So one way they present is they go with their posters to the science fair. You may recognize some of these folks who were at the regional science fair last year. They will also go on to state level competitions. These competitions last year were held virtually, but these are some of our students who uh, won awards at the state level. Very powerful for college admissions to have a science award at the state level. Um, but remember, these posters and presentations happen in the spring. And so in order to be ready, by the middle of January, juniors have completed their data collection and analysis. So what happens on Fridays in the spring if you've already done all of this work and research? And Dr. Douglas is going to tell you a little about that. Yeah, that's right. So now that you have your Fridays available because your research project is done, um, our students their junior year get to participate in a 36 hour internship experience. And this can be very valuable for many reasons. First of all, you get to explore an opportunity um, in an area of which you might be interested in and actually see what it's like to be in the field. Now, you might find out that it's not really for you and it could change your mind. And for a lot of our students, they are like, oh yeah, this is really what I wanna do um, in college. And so it's a way to kind of try out a certain profession before you commit yourself to four years plus of college to do something you may or may not really enjoy. Another reason why we do this your junior year, um, and I think this is very important, is you get to reflect on that experience when you're applying to colleges and universities. You now have that uh, experience under your belt when you're already applying. Because if you do this during your senior year, you may not have completed the internship by the time you're applying to colleges. And you can see that we have uh, many different placements. Uh, we've been around for over 35 years doing internships, which means we have dozens of different locations that our students will go. 
Um, now our largest one there in the middle, we have a lot of students that will go to Centra, uh, but then they go off and they go to different areas. Maybe they wanna be um, surgeons or in the radiology department, PT, they could be a PA, dentistry or whatever. We also have vet, engineering, computer science, all kinds of different areas. Now, about a third of our students will go into the medical field and about a third of the students will go into some type of physics or engineering and about a third will go into other things. So you might think, well, maybe I don't wanna major in math or science. Is governor school still right for me? Some of our internships are for business or education, things that are outside. The governor school is, doesn't just prepare you to be a mathematician or a scientist. It, it helps you become a better thinker and having those critical thinking skills, which are applicable to many different areas. So that's a little bit about internships. And I will mention that just real quick, I probably should have mentioned this too. This year, the internships are career explorations where we're still going to have professionals from the field coming and, and talking virtually to our students. And they're gonna learn more about all these different areas. And so we've got a very exciting format planned for them where they're gonna have virtual tours. They're gonna have guest speakers. They're gonna learn a lot about what it takes to be in that type of field, what their day-to-day -day operations are, among other things. So we still have very good uh, quality experiences. So whether it's an internship that's on site or career explorations that's done virtually, our students uh, will be prepared. At any rate, here we go, the CBGS, the senior courses. So what do you do your senior year? Well, you take math and science again, just like you did your junior year. But now instead of that year long research project that you did, now you're doing something called senior seminar. So let's look at math. In mathematics, the governor school being a school for gifted math, science and technology students, we have connections in math or calculus one, two or three, depending on how far you want to go in mathematics in your comfort level. Sometimes people want to really push the limit and then maybe they want to major in mathematics and learn more, or sometimes they might want to do something less math-based and you can do Calc 1, 2, or connections in math. And that is really up to you. So we have lots of different levels of mathematics for all of our uh, seniors and juniors, really. And then for science. Now, back when I started, and this was a, a, a while ago, there was uh, biology 101 and 102, and there's also computer science. Well, now we have human anatomy physiology because so many of our students were interested in going into the medical field. And so students can take human anatomy physiology, which is eight credits. And we still have computer science, which is eight credits. But starting this coming year, we're actually restructuring to best meet the needs of our students. Uh, from asking our students and going into internships, we found that they have a lot of interest in the physical science of either physics or engineering. And so starting next year, we're gonna offer college physics, which will be eight college credits for a 200 level physics class. It'll be project-based and it'll still include computer science elements such as programming, and it'll be project-based and include engineering topics as well. We also found that physics, having, a prereq having eight college credits of physics, even if you don't major in physics or math, a lot of times it will fulfill that goal, those requirements for when you get to college. So even if you're like, well, I don't want to major in physics. Why do I want to take that? Chances are the major that you want to go into will require eight college physics credits, and this would meet that requirement. So you can see we stay, uh, we stay very flexible and always listening to the needs of our students. And we found that you know, in the two major branches of science. You've got biological science and physical science. So for the biological sciences, human anatomy and physiology meets the needs for those that wanna go into the medical profession. College physics will be the physical science. Whether you wanna go into physics, engineering, computer science, you're going to need eight college physics credits anyway. So this is a way that we can meet those needs. So it's very exciting that we'll be able to offer that this coming year. Um, I'll talk just a little bit about the tech labs, if I may. Um, I, we're at 1131. And one of the things we really want to do, we have a video to show you. It's about nine minutes. And then we want to hear from uh, Katie and Hollins and Drew. They're current students. They're CVGS ambassadors. Um, so we want to make sure that you get the student's perspective. So I'm going to go relatively quickly. Um, these are our current tech labs. Uh, we change our tech labs based on what our students tell us they want to experience. So um, these are not the same tech labs that we had. They're very different than the ones that we had when I started at the governor's school. Um, and we will continue to adjust, like one of the newest ones, the virtual reality lab uh, is a very um, cool 
cutting edge lab that we're excited about um, continuing to develop once we can have more people uh, in that tech lab. So just a few photos that I thought would be the best way to say a picture is worth something like 999 words or I don't remember exactly, but uh, here are some photos of some of the equipment. Uh, we have 3D printers, um, some of the things that students have printed over time. We are the Griffins, by the way, you can be a Hilltopper and a Griffin. Uh, we have a commercial grade laser engraver. We have indoor drones. We also have outdoor drones. We have biotechnology and some advanced microscopes. We have uh, microbiology and use some of the exact same techniques um, that are used in current micro labs. We have a scanning electron microscope, which is very rare uh, to have in this country in a high school. Um, you don't find many of these. I think there are a handful of them in the whole United States. And this may be the only one that high school students are able to run on their own. Um, this is an image, uh, a micrograph from the scanning electron microscope that has been colorized. That is the surface of a strawberry. Um, we have scientific photography, so we can capture um, high speed action. This is actually um, a speaker that had saran wrap put over it and then had paint put on it. And then the music was turned up and when the bass dropped, the paint jumped and made some pretty cool different uh, patterns. Uh, again, scientific photography, this was drawn with um, the shutter left open so that this was when um, the movie came out with the girl on fire. You may have heard of that one. Uh, Photoshop. Uh, Photoshop is fun. One of my favorite stories. Uh, there was a student whose grandparents, their anniversary, 50th anniversary was coming up and their wedding photo had been damaged over time. And he was able to restore it and frame it and give it to them as an anniversary gift, which I thought was awesome. She did not go to prom with that man. Um, yeah, so we have a leadership lab. Uh, this is actually where we talk about how, um, and Dr. Douglas mentioned uh, communication and teamwork, how important they are at the governor's school and in college and in life in general. And so we talk about those topics and then the students participate uh, on the crew of the starship and they work together to uh, protect our planet from alien invaders and you can thank them when you see them. So far, so good. Uh, we have a virtual reality lab. I mentioned that. This is kind of fun. So this is our custodian, Ms. Wilson. And she believes she's walking on a plank out above a city about 30 stories up. And that's what it looks like to her. And you can see uh, she's reacting in a certain way that's producing a certain response to the people in the room. Uh, so that was a good time. She's a little nervous. Um, so how can you learn more about CVGS? Um, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. What I'd like to do now is take you to our YouTube channel, CVGS Director. There are a lot of fun videos there, but I wanna show you a nine minute overview video and then we're gonna have our ambassadors share information with you. So I'm gonna stop sharing and I'm going to reshare. And when I reshare, we're gonna to go to YouTube. So just one moment. And let's see here. I want to make sure that you're hearing the sound. So Dr. Douglas, if you give me a thumbs up, if you're hearing the sound. When I was a freshman and sophomore, oh, I always remember the smartest, the best and brightest went to go school. I would say what convinced me most to come to CVGS was the passion that I could see all of the current students have. They were stressed out, but they were excited to be stressed out. It was fun for them. And I came here and I learned that it was fun for me too. The Central Virginia Governor's School has been serving our gifted juniors and seniors throughout our region since 1985. Our mission at the Governor's School is to develop leaders to address a rapidly changing society. Our rigorous academic program emphasizes learning through inquiry-based learning and also a lot of project-based learning opportunities. Our program is designed to prepare our gifted students throughout the region for the most competitive colleges and universities and beyond. There are just so many opportunities for experience at the Governor's School. We have internships and we have a year-long research paper that we write throughout junior year. Junior research at the Governor's School is one of our trademark classes. It's very individualized. The students find their own research question. It can be difficult to look ahead into the crystal ball and decide that you're going to enjoy working on this for six to nine months, particularly when you don't completely understand yet perhaps all of the science or engineering behind the topic. So one of the nice things about being a lead research teacher is I get to have hands-on interaction with all of our research projects. Even though we have other research mentors, I oversee a lot of what the students are doing. I help them order supplies, 
um, making sure everyone has space for their research and guiding them through the process. And it's a really fun experience because every year students pick something different and I'm always learning something new with them, which is really exciting. My project was titled The Effect of Participant Background Information on Their Perceptions of Character Designs. I compared the durability of shingar materials to metal alternatives to shock absorbents. I studied the globular cluster NGC6266. The effect of personality on decision making. Whether youth football helmets were as protective as adult football helmets. The effect of the influence of gender stereotypes on fear of crime. Validity of manufacturers' claims on waterproof materials. The effect of building materials on wireless internet signals. Along the way, you're going to learn how to statistically analyze your results, so more than just averaging values together after multiple trials. And then writing and preparing for presenting what your results would be in front of judges. And throughout the whole year, there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one mentoring and interaction that goes on. So every person gets the attention that they need. I gravitated more towards the governor's school because I personally am interested in going into a STEM career. So I was looking for something that would allow me to develop skills necessary to kind of put me ahead to get my foot in the door. All of our juniors participate in an internship program. It lasts for 36 hours and occurs on Fridays after the research class is done. It occurs Friday morning, so it's only during governor school time, so that it doesn't infringe on your base school, so you can be a griffin and participate in all of the activities at your base school. So each year we use approximately 20 to 25 different internship mentors. The Animal Emergency and Critical Care. Central Health. Amazement Square. Consolidated Shoe Company. Hurt and Profit. Framatome. Novatech. And so to begin the internship process, we send a survey out to all the students. And they provide us with a ranking of their interests. And from there, can sit down and decide based on what their interests are and some of their strengths what might be a good location for them. I'm currently making a project in solar panels and creating a solar hot water heater to show how that could help countries that don't have other opportunities to heat up water for cooking. I got to work with a nuclear engineer on analyzing the fluid flow, the water flow through a nuclear reactor and see how it cooled it and if it was cooling it sufficiently. I shadowed at the Strubon's cardiovascular pavilion and then I had one rotation at the OR where I actually saw surgeries standing beside the doctor himself. So one of the great things about students doing the internship during their junior year is that they can explore a little bit about what they might want to do in the future. Junior year is a really big year for them to start deciding what they want to major in and where they want to apply for school. So by exploring an engineering internship, they learn a little bit more about the variety of engineering there is and maybe it is or isn't for them. And so it helps them to plan their futures a little better. The tech labs are one of my favorite things because we basically get to play with expensive toys. So every Friday, our seniors get to take part in a really cool opportunity where they get exposed to a lot of different technologies and they get to choose what they want to experience. So we have lots of things from drones to scanning electron microscopes to Photoshop. And me personally, I get to help with the scientific photography lab. Scientific photography is a really cool lab where students get to take pictures of high speed objects. They pop balloons or they drop a rock into water and watch the splash. They'll make a complete mess um, but they get really cool shots and they have a lot of fun doing it as well. I think my favorite was probably drone technologies just because you know how there's really not a program around here like it to get to control a very expensive drone you know on your own and have the freedom to fly it how you want to and learn to use it. LTC is also very fun. Which is leadership, teamwork, and communication, and was by far my favorite. We got to play Artemis, which is a video game where you have to work as a team, and Dr. Smith has a lot of great resources, like the One Minute Manager that actually ended up helping me in a lot of group projects that I was doing at my base school and at CVGS. So you're gonna walk in expecting to learn about photography, and you're gonna end up learning about the physics and dynamics of light. You're gonna walk into SEM and end up of learning about the physics of electron particles. So you're going to have a, so much more fun than you expected and you're going to end up with a lot more information than you could have anticipated and it's just a really great opportunity.
What I like most about the tech labs as a whole is we are never just resting on our laurels. We're always developing new tech labs. We're bringing in two new tech labs, I believe, next year and another one the year beyond that. And we're always looking to keep up to pace with technology and what's happening in the world. It's just a great place to be. The atmosphere here is warm and welcoming and a fabulous learning environment. One of the differences between the governor's school and a traditional high school is that we often use the phrase that we are a community of learners. And you can see that, I think, every day when you come into the governor's school. You can tell that our students care about other students. To me, the community of learners means uh, having the opportunity to collaborate and work with your teachers and your peers to develop something that you may not have been able to do on your own. Someone catches a concept better than someone else so they can explain it to the whole group and that's what a community of learning is. You teach each other as you go along. Everybody's just kind of working together as one whole group. It's not like who's the best in the class or anything. It's just everybody's trying to be the best that they can be together. If I could change one thing about CBTS, it would be to have been here for all four years of high school, probably. <laughs> I think everybody should come to CBTS. It's really hard, but it's really fun, and it's the best two years that I've spent in my whole life. I'm Teresa Michael. I'm Laura Callahan. I'm Jack Allen. Madison Markham. Chardul Nafde. Taylor Morgan. Charlie Inman. Coleman Inge. Kennedy Campbell. Daniel Murray. Gabby Hogg. Joshua Keller. Paige David. Abby Ranson. Chloe Ramsey. Moy Molly John Fee. Annabelle Paulette. Chloe Sang. I go to Easy Glass High School. I go to Heritage High School. Brookville High School. I go to Liberty High School. Jefferson Forest. Westburg. Alta Vista. Amherst County. Appomattox. William Campbell. And I go to the Central Virginia Governor's School for Science and Technology. So I hope you enjoyed that video that was produced by Bradley Wetzel, who is class of 2014. Um, and I thought he did an excellent job of capturing what it is the governor's school is about. At this time, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the, if I can, I'm gonna use the spotlight function. So uh, when I spotlight someone, it's going to give you a speaker view rather than a gallery view. And for those of you who are speaking, if it is a little bit upsetting to be speaking to what looks like yourself, um, you can change back to gallery view and that won't affect anyone else's view. So I'd like the opportunity for our three ambassadors to speak. Um, if the person who's going to speak first can just unmute, that would be great. Can you hear me? Yes, Drew, I've got you. Let me go ahead and spotlight you. Okay. And you can begin whenever you're ready. All right, well, hello everyone. Um, my name is Drew Flint and I'm a senior both here at EC Glass High School and at the Central Virginia Governor School. So, you know, I remember when I was where you guys were two years ago, you know, one of the biggest questions I had on my mind was, how is the Governor School going to stack up to maybe the education I could get from EC Glass? And is it gonna be worth going to Governor School? And, you know, after spending about uh, one and a half years here, I, I think there are kind of some major things that I think really make the Governor School stand out. Um, the first of which I think is just the advanced opportunities you get. You know, I think you've already heard a lot about the junior research project. And for me, that was very fun, not because it was a research project, but because it was an experience that we got to tailor to ourselves. So it's basically a, a class that you create as you go along and you're not being told, this is your project, uh, here's what you're gonna do. Instead, you're making it up as you go. And that was really fun. And I think the other thing about the project uh, that has become more apparent as I've gone through the college application process this fall is that it is a very strong resume builder and you can go to many different uh, symposiums and win many different awards and I you know I kind of think sometimes what I would put in that my that slot in my college application if I didn't have that project to talk about. Um, there are also internships which you've heard about too and I think this is a way that you know, you can still tailor it to your liking. You get to explore fields and career paths that you really like. And I think it allows you to not only look at careers you like, but maybe when you're done, you can say, I didn't like that as much as I thought I would. And I think it's also important to, you know, check things off as you go so you can narrow in on what you like. And I think just one of the last things is just the course intensity. You know, things move a lot quicker. You know, you need higher level thinking skills and there's just more material covered. And I think at first glance, that could sound very stressful, but I think after having gone through my experience here, 
you know, it's like what they said, it's a very strong community of learners. And, you know, you get to study with your peers and everyone can bounce ideas off everyone else. And it's just a very pleasant, pleasant environment. And I guess from when I was two years ago on from the outside looking in, you know, I thought the governor's school was a very competitive environment and everyone was pitted against each other. Um, but I think it's quite the contrary. And it's been, you know, a very collaborative culture and it's been very fun to be a student here. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and hand it off to Hollins and she's gonna talk a little bit more to you guys. Very well done. Okay. I'm gonna spotlight you, Hollins. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Hollins Pierpoint. I am also a student ambassador at Gov School and I go to EC Glass. I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about how attending Gov School has changed me academically and also personally. Um, for one, I have definitely gained a lot more independence in my learning. I have developed my time management skills because the teachers here, they don't enforce homework. A lot of times it's optional, but highly encouraged. And because of this, I've had to learn how to set myself down and do the homework because I know that it'll benefit me to learn it rather than to motivate or be motivated through a grade. I've also had to develop study habits because I never really needed to study as they mentioned earlier. Um, but then coming to Gov School, I've realized that I have to sit down and review the material before I am given the opportunities to form my understanding. Um, and I've also been given more responsibilities which have led to me being more independent in my learning because Gov School has taught me that I should do the work so I can learn it rather than do the work so I can get a good grade. Um, and finally, the freedom and respect and trust that the teachers have and give to you, it has definitely increased my independence in learning because these teachers are there to guide you and help you, you when you need them, but they also believe in you and know that you can succeed. So it definitely gives you a lot more freedom in completing assignments. And then personally, um, I have been changed through Gov School because when I first got in, I definitely did not think I was capable of going to Gov School and I didn't think I would fit in with all of the really smart people that also got in. But coming to Gov School and being surrounded by these very supportive teachers and these students who are in this at the same level as you, it has definitely increased my ability and my confidence in myself. So Gov School has definitely just, it's a great experience. And now I'm gonna pass it on to Katie and she'll give y'all some advice for applying to Gov School. All right, Katie, I'm gonna spotlight you now. All right, hi guys, I'm Katie Salmon. Um, I'm a senior at EC Glass and Gov School. And um, I think one of the most important things about your application to Gov School is um, showing them that you're a well-rounded student. So I think it's always that temptation to put as many, as many science and math things that we've done on our application. It's like, I'm applying to a school for science and math. I need to put science and math things on there. But they wanna see you as a student as a whole rather than just in science and math. So if you can balance, if you're balancing sports and extracurriculars and, and you have passions and interests in other classes like foreign language, they're interested in seeing that um, on your application as well. And it's really important. I know Holland's, um, she has a really big interest in French and she had the French teacher write her recommendation. And um, that, I think that was one of the ways she, that helped her stand out on the application. Um, so make sure that you're just expressing that you're a person with multiple interests because that's they want to see you as a real person, not just somebody who is interested in science and math. Also, for your recommendations, you want to make sure you're picking teachers that actually know you. Not it doesn't necessarily have to be the teacher that you currently have or from the most recent years. That you want to pick somebody that you had a good rapport with or that could reflect your behavior and your um, participation and your um, habits. On, on recommendation. So um, in the essays, another thing about being yourself um, on paper, because you, it's not an interview, you're not gonna be able to talk to them. So you wanna be able to express who you are as a person and what you're gonna bring to Gov School 
on a piece of paper as best as you can. So if you're writing an essay, you don't want it to be so formal. You want your own voice to shine through in that. You want them to be able to see who you are. And that being said, you should also definitely get people to read your essays um, because sometimes we write things and they just don't sound the way we want them to sound. So make sure you're getting people to read your essays, um, but always let your personality show through in your application because um, they're looking for a person to include in Gov School, not just not just a piece of paper, not just grades. Um, and always just apply because I know it can be easy if you're not sure to just be like, oh, I'm not going to apply because that's too much work. But just I, I'm really encouraging you to just put in that effort and just apply because it doesn't cost anything and it's just opening a door for you. It's just giving you an opportunity. Um, it's not, it's never going to hurt you to apply. And if you get in, you can always turn it down, but you always want to have that opportunity to be a part of um, CBGS if you can, even if you don't, if you, even if you aren't sure. So just apply is that's the biggest thing. Fantastic. You all, you all did an excellent job. I knew you would. I knew you would, but you did a fabulous job. And, and I love ending with just apply because it doesn't cost you anything except time. It's non-binding and it's a good experience for you because you're gonna apply to college. And it's like a small college application. It will give you um, an idea of what you'll be going through as you complete your college applications. Fantastic job, Katie, Hollins, Drew. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, we have a few more minutes. It's 11.53. Um, I wanted to make sure that I gave you all the information you needed about um, the Gulf School in terms of how to get more information. So if you have a question now, I'm going to share screen a little bit more, but you can type your question into chat and we'll see if one of our ambassadors wants to answer it or if Dr. Douglas wants to answer it or if it'd be appropriate for me to answer it. But I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint just briefly. And let me see if I can... Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, the YouTube channel. There's some fun stuff there. Go and, go and see how we figured out how to let people know how many people are in a restroom at any one time. It's a COVID thing, but it's a pretty, pretty cool video. It's short. Um, we are going to have program overview nights, and these are appropriate for parents as well. So they're going to be virtual program overviews, kind of similar to what we did tonight, except you're going to get to meet the entire team. So all the teachers um, will be participating. So we'll have those, and you don't have to screenshot that or take a photograph of it. You can go to our website and you can find it on our calendar. Our calendar has all our events for the year, so you'll find things there. We've heard from our current students. Here's one question I get a lot. How is Gov School different from early college and the STEM Academy? And these three programs are designed to do different things for people. So our program is designed to get you ready to be, um, to be prepared for any college in the United States. We send students to UVA, uh, William and Mary, Virginia Tech, University of Lynchburg, Princeton, Harvard, Yale, MIT, every college. We, we can send students to any, any school and they will email me back and say, hey, I was ready. There's no one here who's more well prepared than I have been by the Gov School. So that's our job to get you ready for competitive four-year schools. Um, you'll get some dual enrollment course credit, but you're not going to get an associate's degree. If you want a two-year degree, which will likely cut down the number of undergraduate years you spend in college, then early college gives you an associate's degree. If you want a career technical certification so you can go out of high school and make good money working in mechatronics or working in the health sciences field, the STEM Academy does that. That's not what we do. Um, we have a research project and a 36 hour internship. Um, no one else has a research project. There are internships available in the STEM Academy, but they're structured differently. We've been around for um, much longer than these other programs. And so when you apply to colleges and universities, um, they're more likely to understand what the Go School is and what it does. That's an advantage we have. The environment in each of these programs is different. So you want to talk to students who have been in those programs. That's really the overview. And what I'd like to do now, if I may, is take a look in the chat and see if we have some questions that we can answer for folks. Dr. Douglas, what do you see in the chat? Well, I see something that um, I shared, just letting uh, them know that from the guidance department, they wanted to uh, make sure that you all were aware of the link of how to apply. Um, and I would also like to encourage you that remember there's no cost to apply or to attend the governor's school. So it costs you nothing to apply. 
you can always say no, it's non-binding. That's the best kind of thing to do is, you know, if you're not sure if, you know, early college or gov school is right for you, apply to everything. And that's honestly what I would do. Just go ahead and apply. It doesn't cost you anything. And you could decide later, you know what, I might have gotten in, um, but I decided I didn't want to go to the governor's school. Now, I don't think that, honestly, I might be a little biased, but I don't think that happens. Um, but I would encourage you to apply to multiple places if you want to. And if you're not sure how, talk to your guidance counselor. Go to that link visit our website. You can ask me, you can ask Dr. Smith, you can ask another student, go to guidance. Um, don't let the deadlines pass you by, but for more information, I did put in the chat uh, some information related to EC Glass specifically about what processes you should do. Uh, so see your guidance counselor for more information. Um, let's see, is there anything in the chat yet? There wasn't when I last, does anybody have any questions? I mean, You've done, you've done a great job stretching to see up. Oh, there we go. We've got oh. one. Can we enroll into more than one course? So, um, yes, if you are, if you apply and you are accepted at the governor's school, you will take three courses each year. Um, but you're going to take uh, your math, your science, and then your special course, which is either going to be research or it's going to be senior seminar. Um, we have had students occasionally take two math courses. They might be in Calc 2, 3 in the senior year and also want to take connections with me. Um, and that has happened once or twice, but it's very unusual. Um, so I, I mention it just because if you ask me, I'll always give you the answer, a complete answer to your question. But it's very unusual. Three courses in the morning, then back to the base school for everything else. Thank you for your question. Any last question before we wrap up? Well, and I would like to just add, because it might just be related to that. Uh, you come here in the morning and then you go back to your base school in the afternoon. We do not, we oftentimes have students ask, well, I, I play sports or I'm in band or I have a job. Will this infringe on my outside time? We have students from 10 different high schools. So your commitment to governor school only happens during governor school time. So we're not going to infringe on your extracurricular. So you can still uh, go be a hilltopper and play in band and orchestra and all the other extra correct curricular activities that you currently do, and Governor's School will not take away from that. We had a question in the chat, how is the day structured? I started to type the answer, but I'll just say it. The day is structured so that for most students, you're here from 7.30 until 10.10. However, we do offer a second session when we have a full on-site program. So we have some students who have to drive in from farther away. They're not typically EC Glass students, and they would go from 8.25 until 11.05. Um, some of our students might be able to tell you how their day uh, in a typical in a typical year is was structured in junior year. Um, and I think that they had some time between Gov School and their other classes. Hollins, is that correct? Yeah, so we had the first three periods from 730 to 1010 at Gov School. And then there was about an hour travel period because it was a it was a whole period at glass where you were able to drive to class. Um, personally, sometimes I would go home <laughs> and I'd get some work done and I'd eat lunch and then I'd have to go to class. So that's how the day is structured for us. Thank you very much. Um, currently uh, in the COVID uh, pandemic environment, we have uh, synchronous classes, which means uh, real time. We're in the same virtual space together. We're hybrid, which means we have some students on site, about 20 to 25% of our students are on site on any given day, and the rest of the students are in a Zoom room. And the way we make them interactive, we did a little bit of that with you, with the chat feature um, and the unmute and everybody talk in a cacophonous way, um, but we also annotate on screen uh, and do those kinds of things as well. And again, we have a lot of um, group projects that we do to keep people actively engaged. Well, it is 12.01. You all have been very patient. Thank you so much for your time. If you come up with a question, let's just all ask Katie. You can just find her email address. Just ask Katie. She'll tell you, or Drew, or Holland, or you can email me. Go to our website. If you have a question, ask your question. Whether you come to Gov School or not, advocate for your own needs. Ask your question. We'll get you an answer. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you so much.